Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys the best OBS streaming settings in 2019, and if you want some proof as to why I'm a good person to go to for this kind of stuff, I have the most popular 2017 and 2018 version of this video. So hopefully we can do it again for 2019. But one thing I do want to mention is that I did work directly with NVIDIA for this video, and they helped me get the best quality settings for basically any of you guys watching right now. Having said that, you will still need a decent internet upload speed and a solid gaming or video editing PC that will be able to handle all the encoding that streaming requires. So if you have bad internet or a bad computer, this video might not be the one for you. So for this video, we're actually going to be using the newest version of OBS, so definitely make sure that you have yours updated all the way, and I will have a download link in the description below in case you guys need that, but I'm also going to have one for Streamlabs OBS as well. If you guys don't know what Streamlabs OBS is, it's basically like an all-in-one OBS solution that will have like your live chat, stream alerts, like your donations and followers popping up on the screen automatically, and so much more. It's truly like the best tool for streaming so definitely check that out by downloading that as well. It should be next to the OBS link. But anyways, Streamlabs OBS just doesn't have the newest NVIDIA encoder yet, so that's why we're going to be using the normal OBS in this video, but I will try to do some side-by-side -side picks in case you guys do want to use that instead. Honestly though, it should be updated sometime this month, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Anyways, if this video does end up helping you guys out at all, and you guys want to see more videos like it, then please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also comment below, who is your favorite streamer to watch? I'm going to be responding to all the comments. For me personally, it's Nadeshot, but I really want to see what you guys have to say as well. Anyways, let's finally get on with the video. Alright, so first things first of course is go ahead and open up OBS. Now since this is just like a streaming settings guide, I'm expecting that most of you guys know how to set up like scenes and sources, so I'm not going to be covering that, but in case you guys don't, then you guys can check out my uh, best recording settings video that I made for 2019, and I do cover all that in like some good detail. Anyways, to save some time, let's just go ahead and head straight into the settings, and in case you guys are following this tutorial with Streamlabs OBS, then I should have a picture highlighting how to get to the settings from there on the screen right now. But anyways, when you're here, the first thing that we want to do is go to the video tab, and when you're here, go to the description and open up the link that takes you to speedtest.net. When you're there, go ahead and hit the go button to start your speed test and just make sure that you're connected with an ethernet cable or something when doing this because that's going to give you the most accurate results, but it's also what you want to be using when you're streaming to get the best quality anyways. So this test is going to tell us your internet speed and for streaming, anything below 3 for your upload speed isn't even worth trying to stream. And the reason I say that is because you just don't have enough bandwidth to stream and play your game and share internet with your other family members at the same time. Anyways, when your test is done, just try to remember the first two numbers right here under your upload speed. So for me, it's 11 and you don't have to worry about anything after the decimal, it doesn't really hold that much value. Now, for most people, it's gonna be very similar to mine, it's only gonna be double digits or maybe even like a single digit over here, but there are gonna be some people watching this video that have like something in the thousands or in the hundreds, but at that point, you're more than okay and you don't really have to worry about much. Anyways, like I said before, just make sure you remember the number in front of the decimal and then from there we can go back to OBS. When you're back in OBS, what you want to do is make sure that you leave your base canvas resolution at the max that it allows you to be at. So for me it's 2560x1440, but I'm guessing for most of you guys it's going to be 1920x1080, and that's more than okay. The reason mine's like that is because I have a 1440p monitor, but most people do have a 1080p monitor, so that's why I'm expecting that most of you guys will be using 1920x1080. Now moving on from that, we have the output skill resolution, and I should have a table on the screen right now that tells you what to do here. So for example, if you have an upload speed of 4, then make your resolution 1280x720, by clicking on the drop down menu right here and looking for 1280x720. From there, click it and you should be good to go. And in that same situation, you're going to want to change your common FPS values from 60 down to 30. If you have an upload speed above 15, then all you have to do is just change this back to 1080p and then you can change this to 60. Honestly though, one thing I do like to do personally is I like to manually type in my output skill resolution and I usually change this to 1600x900 and then from there it's usually like a really good middle point and I type that in manually because I feel like it's better quality than 720p but it doesn't really require as much work as it does for 1080p encoding. So I definitely think that if you're in the middle range like I am like with 11 then you should definitely try this as well. Leave your downscale filter at length so sharpen scaling and 32 samples. From there hit apply and then we're going to go to the output tab but again one thing I do want to mention is make sure that you look at the table that I had on the screen and then pick whatever matches for your output skill resolution. Always leave your base canvas resolution at whatever it is on default, like usually the highest one, but your output skill resolution is actually going to be the quality that you're going to be streaming in. So if I leave mine at this, that means that I'm going to be doing a 900p stream. If I change this to 1080p, then I'm going to be doing a 1080p stream, 720p, 720p stream, and so on and so forth. But again, I highly recommend just going with whatever I have on the table on the screen right, uh, that I had on the screen earlier, if that makes sense. But anyways, moving on from that, we can go to the output tab, and in case you guys do want to run a simple stream without a bunch of settings, then all you have to do is just make sure that the output mode is on simple instead of advanced. From there, just change your video bitrate to whatever I have on the screen right now, like with the table, and whatever corresponds with your upload speed. Uh, even though I have a good upload speed at 11, I usually like to leave mine around like the 4000 range, like usually like 4500 or something like that. Leave your bitrate at... 160, it really doesn't matter too much for your audio bitrate, and you want to make sure that your encoder is the NVENC encoder. From there, enable advanced encoder settings, and then from here we're going to see your encoder preset. 
So change your preset to max quality in case you have like a really good graphics card like a RTX 2080 or a 1080 Ti or something like that. Change it to quality in case you have like a normal one like a 1070 or 1060. And then to change it to performance in case you have anything lower than that, but I really don't recommend going anything below performance, personally. Anyways, from there all you have to do is hit apply and you should be good to go. But for me, I'm doing a video on the advanced settings so I want to go back here, change this to advanced and then let's get started with the settings. So leave your audio track on 1 and then what you want to do right away is change your encoder from this one to the one that says new. It's the new NVIDIA encoder and you're probably not going to see this if you haven't updated your OBS yet, so definitely be sure to do that. And this is exactly the same encoder that I was talking about when I said that Streamlabs OBS just hasn't updated yet. So when you select this over the other NVIDIA one, you get more options to play with as you can see right here. If you don't have this yet, then just go ahead and use the other one, but if you do, then I highly recommend using this one instead. One thing I do want to mention is in case you do have to use the old one, then make sure you do not check rescale output. We do not want to check that, but all the other settings you can probably copy from me. So I'm going to go back to the new one, and then from here, what you want to do is enforce the streaming service encoder settings. So check that. Now for your rate control, this determines what rate the frames are actually being encoded at. So what we want to do is just go ahead and pick CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. And then for bitrate, it's going to be the exact same thing as I showed you guys before. Just do whatever works best with your upload speed on the table that I'm showing you guys on the screen right now. Damn, that sentence took me a, <laughs> that sentence took me a minute to say, but anyway. Now, I personally think that something like 4500 is usually a really good middle spot for no, like really whatever upload speed you have. I know a lot of like the big streamers like Ninja, Courage, Nadeshot, a lot of these people, they do 6000 for their bitrate, but I really found that 4500 is a really good middle spot, like I said before. But honestly, if you just want to test your PC and like your speeds and all that stuff with different values, then obviously go for it. But if you have anything above like a 15 upload speed, then just leave it at 6000 if you're going to go any higher than this. There's almost never any point in pushing it any further than 6000, especially because Twitch doesn't even allow you to go above 6000, and if you do make yours above 6000, then you're really just doing it for no reason at all. Change your keyframe interval to 2. Most streaming platforms actually require you to set it to 2, so that's why we're doing that. For your preset, what you want to do is make sure that you leave it on either max quality, quality, or performance, just like I said before. If you have a really good GPU, it's worth setting this to max quality. I have an RTX 2080, so that's usually what I do. If you have like a 1060 or 1070, then try doing quality, and if you have anything below that, then just change it to performance. But like one thing I really do want to say is in case you have it on like max quality or quality, and then you get like an encoder overload issue when you're streaming, then just slowly bring that down to like, maybe if you're on max quality, bring it down to quality, and if you're on quality, bring it down to performance. But again, like I said before, just stop at performance if you have to go that far. But definitely be sure to try each level and just see what works best for you. Anyways, moving on from that, you should always have your profile set to high, and the reason why I say that is because it really doesn't impact the performance of your stream at all, but it does give you access to a set of features that are really useful for streaming, so no matter what, we always want that to be on high. So go ahead and do that, and then for look ahead, you can usually leave this unchecked unless you're playing like a game that has a lot of low motion. But moving on from that, I highly recommend leaving Psycho Visual Tuning checked, because this actually enables an optimizer in the NVIDIA encoder that improves your image quality a ton. Anyways, for GPU, you can usually just leave this at zero. Um, if you have two graphics cards in your PC, then you can pick which one you want to code with but I really wouldn't recommend changing it past zero because Nvidia is already like insanely efficient with their encoders so it's not really that useful. Anyways go ahead and change your last setting from max B frames to two then go ahead and apply and you should be good to go. From there go to the streaming tab right here and just go ahead and make sure oh wait did I get a subscriber? Hey I just got a subscriber. Anyway go to your streaming settings and make sure that your service and your stream key and all that good stuff is good to go. If you use Streamlabs OBS, which I will have a download link for in the description below, then you should have everything automatically set up in this tab right here when you connect your, like, your YouTube account or your Twitch account or your Mixer account or whatever you use. Once again, I do want to mention that I will have that linked in the description below. It's usually what I use whenever I stream because it puts like the chat and your donations and really everything else in the same window and it's really useful in case you're a beginner streamer. Anyways, go ahead, apply that once you've added your stream key and like you change your service and your server. From there, we can go to the audio tab. There's really not too much special here. You can change like where your sound goes to on your computer. So for me, my sound goes to my headset, so that's what I have selected right here for my desktop audio device. Uh, for your mic device, just change that to your microphone, leave your sample rate, leave your channels, all that good stuff, and you should be good to go from there as well. Anyways, from there, if you made any changes, go ahead and apply, and then from there we can move on to the advanced tab. And this is my advanced tab, it's really not anything too special, but in case you guys do want to copy it, definitely go ahead and feel free to do so. I believe I just leave, I believe the only things you might want to change are make this normal, make this NV12, 601, and then partial. From there, when you hit apply, hit okay, everything should be good to go. But anyways guys, that's really it for today's video. I do want to give a quick shout out to NVIDIA for actually helping me out with this video. If you guys did like it and you guys want to see more videos like it, then please do hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you guys have any friends who want to start streaming too, then definitely share this video with them because if you guys both have good settings, you can both finally hit that start streaming button on OBS and finally enjoy the fun. But anyways, if you guys have any questions at all, just shoot me a follow on Twitter and then go ahead and tweet me. I should have it on the screen right now. I'll do my best to get back to every one of the tweets that I get and also most of the comments that I get on this video as well. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.